guys, welcome back. My name's Nathan, and today I'm going to be discussing my 10 takeaways from the NHL season so far. Now, we're only four days into the NHL season, but we've already seen so many fantastic games and so many surprising things happen throughout the league. So when it comes to my 10 takeaways, what are my thoughts and opinions on what's happened in the NHL so far, and what is my main takeaways from the first week of the NHL season? Watch till the end to find out. Now, the first few days in the NHL season have been about as exciting as advertised, with so many fantastic games and so many fantastic surprises to choose from. But going straight into my takeaways, not wasting any time whatsoever, going to my first takeaway from the NHL season so far, I have Mika Zibanejad or Timmy Panarin dominating for the New York Rangers. While the New York Rangers have only played two games so far this season, in both of them, Zibanejad and Panarin have been a lethal duo. And Zibanejad right now leads the NHL in points with eight points, four goals, four assists in two games so far. And yes, it is super early in this NHL season, but it's good to point out that Zibanejad has a four point per game, which is absolutely insane. You also have Artemi Panarin, who settled in pretty much seamlessly for the New York Rangers, has played two games and has gotten two goals, two assists for four points, being as good as advertised. You have some other great offensive guys on New York that have played well so far this season, guys like Kreider, Truba, and Buchnevich, but Zeminijat and Panarin have been the dynamic duo and are pretty much the main reason why New York is 2-0 to start out this season. Now going on to my second takeaway for the NHL season so far, now dialing into the Toronto Maple Leafs and Austin Matthews being an early Rocket Richard contender. Now Austin Matthews and the Toronto Maple Leafs, like they have been in the past few years, has been gunning off to a fantastic offensive start. Austin Matthews being healthy and ready to go also helps, but he's had a fantastic season in three games so far. In three games, he's done five points, but all five of those points have been goals, and right now he's leading the NHL in goals. Now, it's it's good to note that a lot of other teams haven't played three games so far this season, but even with that, it is super impressive what he's done. He's just been absolutely magnificent. He's been waiting for his opportunities, too. That's the thing, because he isn't shooting too much in bad opportunities, but the opportunities he does get, he's been scoring on, and of course, one of the best shots, if not the best shot in the NHL, Matthews has been capitalizing on it. Now, initially, I didn't really have Austin Matthews in my top three Rock or Shark contenders, and one of the main reasons because of that was I thought all the drama in the offseason might distract him from getting that top gear this NHL season. But so far in three games, Austin Matthews has proved me wrong so far, and has, again, led the NHL in goals. And the big thing here is if he can stay healthy, which he has been able to do in the past couple of years, I think he could totally finish top five, maybe even top three in the Rock or Shark race. But that is a big if right now. He always gets off this fantastic Octobers and then gets injured in like December or something and can't play the full games. But if he plays healthy and keeps going like this, he should have no problem right now winning the Rock Richard Trophy. Now advancing on to my third takeaway so far this NHL season, now going on to the Vancouver Canucks and them so far proving me right. Now we are two games in the season, so take this with a grain of salt. But the Vancouver Canucks right now are 0-2 and two and are kind of proving me right when I said they weren't a playoff team. I can totally see why you would think that because they have some fantastic talent there. But I didn't really buy them as a playoff team, at least not yet. I saw them as a team that could make the playoffs maybe the year after this one, but not yet. And so far, the Vancouver Canucks have looked like anything but a playoff team. Offensively, it's been super dry. The defense has been rough. The goaltending has been really only the good spot for Vancouver, and even then, it hasn't all been that great. Now getting into my fourth takeaway from the NHL season so far, now getting into the Anaheim Ducks and their fantastic dominant two games. Now the Anaheim Ducks have been great so far, and watching them has been purely a treat. They first won versus the Arizona Coyotes 2-1 at home, and then won versus the Sharks 3-1. And the Sharks and Coyotes I think are both playoff teams in the Pacific Division, and Anaheim made it look like mincemeat. And while those games were close, yes, it wasn't all that competitive and Anaheim pretty much had those games locked down. Especially when it comes to the overall play for Anaheim, they've impressed me quite a bit. I didn't think they'd be a playoff team, but I thought they would be pretty good. But even right now, they're proving me wrong. Now getting into my fifth takeaway from the NHL season so far, 
Now getting into the Buffalo Sabres and their surprising start this season, mostly because of the young players who have stepped up big time. Now the Buffalo Sabres have gotten off to a 2-0 start, have been absolutely amazing, and it's not like there's been close wins either. This have been dominant wins, back to back, and I'm not saying that Buffalo's going to automatically play the playoffs, because again, last year they won 10 games straight, but right now it's looking pretty good for the Buffalo Sabres, and especially the youth has been absolutely fantastic for them, even better than I expected. Now, looking at their top scores right now, it's easy to see why Buffalo has been so good. Starting with their number one guy points-wise being Ravs Dong, their defenseman, with one goal, three assists for four points in two games so far. Then it goes Victor Olofsson, the rookie for Buffalo, who's played two games, gotten two goals, one assist for three points. Then Sam Reinhart, Jack Eichel, Connor Sheary, who is fantastic, Jeff Skinner, and Casey Middlestat, who right now has two assists in two games. And you can see the amazing youth that Buffalo has. They have some great top end talent, yes, but the youth is what's really leading them. Now going into a little bit of a more somber takeaway, we're going to get into my sixth takeaway of the season, that on the New Jersey Devils, and oh, oh my gosh, oh boy. <laughs> Devils fans, I'm sorry for talking about it, but you know, I, I just had to. <laughs> the New Jersey Devils are off to a 0-2 and two start. And it's been a very nightmare type season for them so far. Now again, you got 80 more games to play, but it's not looking too good for them right now. In their first game, they had a 4-0 lead versus the Winnipeg Jets and then lost 5-4 in a shootout versus the Jets. Then they go to their next game versus the Buffalo Sabres and lose 7-2. Yikes. And New Jersey has been super fascinating because they were this team that had this fantastic offseason and everybody and their mother was praising them as the NHL's best offseason acquisitions. But New Jersey's offseason acquisitions have actually been one of their best players. Nikita Gusev has been one of their greatest players so far offensively and P.K. Subban has been great for that defense. But the rest of that team has not exactly lived up to expectations. Mackenzie Blackwood has been horrendous to start out, and Corey Schneider was injured in the first game. That offensive powerhouse hasn't really looked all that great up to this point. And yes, while there is still 80 games to play, right now the offseason champions are anything but right now. Now, speaking of offseason acquisitions, going into my seventh takeaway from the NHL season, I have Matt Duchesne and his dominance with the Nashville Predators. Now, Matt Duchesne had an excellent start with Nashville, and while Nashville is right now up to a 1-1 one and one start, Matt Duchesne has been the big light for Nashville so far. He currently is tied for the second most points in the entire NHL with five assists on the year, five points as well, and he's been Nashville's best point guy too. Just in both games, being a great player, a great offensive player, and as good as advertised for Nashville. They gave him that huge contract in the offseason, but so far it's definitely working. Now moving on from my happy takeaways from the season, and now getting into my depressed takeaways from the season, we now go to the Columbus Blue Jackets and their very interesting start to the NHL season, and mainly the goaltending, which has been a huge problem for them. Now Columbus right now is off to a 0-2 and two start, not surprising to anyone that predicted Columbus finished bottom in Metro like I did, and the goaltending has been a big reason why. Their first game versus Toronto was a 4-1 to one loss, and then the next game versus Pittsburgh was a 7-2 loss. Not good whatsoever. Now, Corpus Solo didn't play terrible in that game versus Toronto. He was actually pretty decent, but the second game versus Pittsburgh is where Elvis Merzlikens came in, a guy that a lot of people hyped him up to be a great starter for Columbus, and ended up letting in a ton of goals and getting the loss versus Pittsburgh. Now, as a person who predicted Columbus to finish last in the Metro Division, this start isn't surprising whatsoever. I thought they had a decent offense, a solid defense, but the goaltending might be the thing that puts them not just outside the playoffs, but down in the dumpster of the NHL. And so far, it's pretty much been that way. Especially in that Pittsburgh game, it was not good whatsoever. And Merz Lickens was a guy that, coming from the NLA, people have a ton of hype for. I didn't quite get that hype, and I needed to see more from him, from what we've seen so far, it hasn't exactly been impressive. Now, going into one of the most surprising, if not the most surprising takeaway from my top 10, going to the Winnipeg Jets and early Calder candidate, Vili Haniola. So far, the Winnipeg Jets have gotten off to a 1-1 one one start, but 
Hivili Hedniola has been one of the biggest stories, maybe the biggest story for Winnipeg so far. In two games, a rookie at age 18, he has gotten two assists for two points, and has maybe been Winnipeg's most solid defenseman so far. And I don't take that lightly. Winnipeg doesn't have a great defense, but Vili Hedniola has been one of the saviors on that defense in the past couple of games for them. Him coming from Finland being a first round pick, I watched him quite a bit in the Liga last year, but I didn't really expect he'd be this NHL ready. But he came into Winnipeg, got a great training camp, a great preseason, got the start with Winnipeg. And while some people might have expected him to get seven games or something, get that NHL tryout, it looks like he could go a lot more than that and play the full NHL season. Now going into my 10th takeaway from the NHL season so far, this one has been, oh my gosh, okay, I'm just going to go out and say it. The San Jose Sharks really do suck at hockey right now, and <laughs> oh, this is the team I predicted to come out of the Western Conference and make the Stanley Cup Final. What was I thinking? I don't even know if it's possible for the San Jose Sharks to have a worse start than they have. It's honestly insane how terribly terrible the San Jose Sharks have been. Now, yes. Losing a Vander Kane, I think, mean, is a tough blow to them. But they shouldn't be losing three straight games to start off the NHL season. In any way possible, there is no excuse for that. Yes, they pl did play Vegas two games, but those games weren't even close, man. The first game was 4-1 to Vegas, the second game was 5-1 to Vegas, and then they go into Anaheim, a team that, again, is at a great start, as we said in this video, but lost 3-1 to and barely had any competition in that game either. It was bad in each three games, and right now it isn't looking better What? Whatsoever. And just in every facet of the game, San Jose has been terrible in. The defense has been horrendously bad. The offense has been nowhere to be seen. And Martin Jones, a guy who I thought would rebound quite well this season, has done anything but do that. It's just been a disaster of a start for the San Jose Sharks. I don't want to say it's over or they can't come back from this because the San Jose Sharks have come from much worse in the past. But this isn't a good start whatsoever for a team that a lot of people said was on the cusp of this great team in the past couple of decades, a team that might be going down and declining, this isn't a great sign. This is the team I said would make the Stanley Cup Final, would lose in the Stanley Cup Final versus Tampa, but right now they're doing anything but succeeding, and right now they might be the worst team in the NHL. But of course, with this video and my 10 takeaways, I need to hear your guys' thoughts down those comments down below. So let me know down below your thoughts on my 10 takeaways. What do you agree and disagree with? And of course, the huge, gigantic question on to y'all. What are your takeaways so far this NHL season? But if you guys want some more grab videos just like this one, you should click on this card right here to watch my full playlist on all of my NHL predictions all throughout the years. You'll see all the bad takes, all the correct opinions, and everything. Trust me, get some popcorn because you'll want to watch it. But that will be it for today, guys. If you guys enjoy, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Again, comment down below your thoughts on my 10 takeaways and what you think of the NHL season so far. Share this video also with your friends, any hockey fans you might know. Try to go to the grab game as much as possible on the road to 10K subs as well, boys. I'm Nathan, and I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Goodbye.